All right, time for some Shakespeare with Henry the Fourth, Part Two. Yay! So, wow, Henry the Fourth, Part Two. Yeah, I always feel it's weird that this book has someone else's title, <laughs> the author's title, which is not Shakespeare because it's got lots of extra work. Actually, it's funny. I should have read. I should have read more of that in. Uh, when I, I always it's weird I like to read things I like to be blind when I go into reading something even if it's Shakespeare and it's hard but in this case actually I didn't do that I read a little bit of the synopsis or the focus uh, I think on the Wikipedia page going in and that made me completely hesitant to keep on going because it said that it was kind of like a carry it was a carryover from part one Henry the fourth part one and it really focused on Falstaff and Falstaff was one of the characters that I continue to be a bit mystified by, um, especially from simply reading, because I don't find that he's very likable. Um, he has a sort of downtrodden thing and jovial, but it's not a laughing matter or a laughing time. And so for me, I have a hard time relating to that. Um, in this one, though, I feel like there's a little more insight. Like, in the first part, I felt like there was some real hurt between him and Henry, Hal, the prince. You know, like, that they were friends, and but then you could see hurt in the truth of, you know, Henry. I don't know. Like, there, like I don't know. There was just some real hurt there. Anyway, in this one, they, they barely see each other. The hurt does continue, but they barely see each other. And it's kind of, I had a bit of a hard time figuring out sort of what it was about. I was able to follow the historical stuff a little bit, you know, like the rebels are still rebelling, you know, all of the king's sons are around him mostly, except for Henry. What's up with that? Um, he goes off with coins and, you know, causes some more trouble. And I was surprised at that too. Um, but, uh, and it was really Prince John, I think, that really st stood up. I'm like, where are my cheat sheets? This is the whole play of it, folks. That's my notes on the whole play. <laughs> One sentence per act on what I felt was the most relevant thing. It was actually a really great, a really great exercise to do that, but um, it was really hard. But anyway, so the rebels are still rebelling. Some go away, some come back. And I found that easier to follow than the story of sort of false staff. And I didn't really, it was just, I couldn't really figure out, especially since most of the scenes with him are, have this jovial feel to them, like a lot of people talking and making jokes, and is it real, is it not real, are they telling the truth, are they not telling the truth, very hard for, for me to get that from reading. When I'm watching, I get it, like, you know, you get the body language, you get the side notes, you get the snide remarks, you get all that, so it's a lot more easier to tell, but when I'm reading it, I can't tell, I can't tell if he's egging someone on, I can't tell if he's on the same side with someone, he often has, like, this chief justice guy coming after him, and saying like, hey, you're supposed to go fight with those people. And, and he doesn't, you know, and he just sort of laughs it off, like pretends he doesn't hear it, you know. And then there's this whole thing with, with the, the tavern keeper and doll, doll tear sheet or something. And it's like, it's I was like trying to figure out, is, is she a prostitute? Is she pregnant? Is what's going on? Like, it just, I didn't understand those scenes like at all. It was just like, is it just supposed to show like the injustice to them, you know, during this time of war or that they relied on Falstaff and he wasn't around or he owed the money or was Miss Quickly like in love with him. I couldn't understand <laughs> like I couldn't figure it out at all. Like at all. So but then it's like the fighting the fighting continues and then Prince John really does he actually totally it, I was like really impressed with one scene. Okay, so spoiler ahead for Henry the Fourth Part Two. Um like I was totally impressed and very happy that I figured out what was actually going on because he tricks um, the rebels into saying, hey, you know, I'll, I'll accept your demands, you know, let's, let's go with peace, right? And let's, let's let all this uh, nonsense lie. And so he does that. And all of the rebel leaders left I say the rebel leaders, like the Nick of Star Wars, they, they send their troops home and then Prince John arrests the three leaders and say, well, what you did was, you know, treason. So, well, accept your terms, but you gotta die. So it was kind of like, oh, where did that come from? So, but it was really good. It was a great scene, um, you know, and then it goes on and, uh, and then, you know, the king is ailing. 
he passes away, King Henry becomes King or Prince Henry becomes King Henry the fifth, and then we'll go on to, to the next play. But um, and then there's this great oh, there's a great scene between King Henry, uh, King Henry and Prince Henry, and I, I want to see it to really sort of figure it out. And there, there's this confusion over the crown, where it looks like Hal takes the crown away, and the king gets really mad, and that Hal thought he was dead. And I couldn't quite understand it, but I know when I see it, it'll be brilliant. Um, and then also, there, the final scene is this horrible, horrible scene, you know, where Falstaff finds out that you know, Prince Hal is now King Hal and they're friends and he's going to be fine. His debts are going to be paid. He can do whatever he wants. He can commit crimes and steal horses and do whatever he wants. And then, you know, he comes to to the, the palace and, you know, Hal basically renounces him and says, I don't know you. I, I can't speak with you. And, and uh, uh, makes him go away. Like, sends him and his friends away until they learn to be more respectful when he banishes them. I was like, wow, that's so harsh. <laughs> you know, it's so harsh. So, yeah. And, and I would actually say that Prince Henry is not in this one a heck of a lot. And I found it a little confusing because in the last one, he seemed to sort of grow up, be like, oh, now we're at a time of war. I'm going to stop being in the taverns and start helping out and fight and stand with my father. And then in this one, most of the times, you know, his father's ailing, his father's you know, challenged, his father's sad, his father needs counsel, and it's always the other sons and his friend, I can't remember, he had, had, had this, like, sort of his side, his, um, I can't remember, um, anyway, he has, he has, like, his, you know, right hand guy, I, uh, and, uh, his liege, uh, is that liegeman? Liegeman, maybe. Anyway, um, I usually read about fictional monarchies, so I never know if the terms are right. So anyway, he doesn't usually confide or talk or speak with Prince Henry. And that made me really sad because I really felt like Prince Henry really had come around, you know, and decided I'm going to step up. And then he's not even in this one that, that much. And when he is, he's more goofing around or listening, you know, pretending to be a drawer. And I, that was the one thing when him and points are drawers and they did this in the first one, too. I don't know if they're actually supposed to be a chest of drawers or if it means like they're like a like a butler like if that's a term for someone at the you know at the at the bar like you know like a bar a bar back or something like that so it's it's like who's gonna really believe your drawers it's one of those theater things that you just gotta believe you know what they say they are but I'm also like but in the room, do they really think you're a drawer? Anyway, so yeah, that's one of the things that stuck with me. So overall, I didn't quite enjoy it as much as Henry the Fourth Part One. Um, I'm really curious to see the Hall of Crown version of this one, especially since I figured out that the guy that plays Falstaff is actually from Penny Dreadful. He plays Lyle uh, Ferdinand. Lyle. He has sort of gray hair. It's very oh, he's oh, he's so wonderful in that. And he was really good in the first one. I just I don't really connect with the character of Falstaff, and I find it really really challenging. I feel like he's one of those characters that people tend to love, and I'm like I don't get it. So anyway, so I'm hoping that I will start to get it, you know, when I watch the film version. So we'll see how that goes. So there you go. Whew! Another Shakespeare checked off, and uh, looking forward to watching it, looking forward to, I'll put down below the uh, Shakespeare Puppets YouTube channel that I'm absolutely loving. I should have actually watched that and then I would have gotten a better uh, better handle on the story uh, before I did my vlog. <laughs> she does such a great job explaining it. It's so wonderful. So there you go, Henry the Fourth, part two. I'm gonna watch the Hall of Crown and then, and then guess what? Yep, probably Henry the Fifth. I gotta see if I have a copyright, I'm not sure. <laughs> Might as well keep on going with the Henrys and see what Hal gets up to. All right, thanks for watching.